Hey everyone, Archer Shadow here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. So previously, MC was starting to feel as though he was falling for Sayori. And I was doing a whole bad spoof of Hercules while I was at it. So now I have no idea what's going to happen next. Oh yeah, and I think sometime in between we did go through the Day of Reckoning. Oh yeah, and then Halloween's coming up. But I'm most likely going to end up skipping that since... It seems to be the same all around. Anyways, man, do I regret staying up late yesterday? I knew it would be a bad idea, but then you did it anyway. Well, what were you doing anyway? I already forgot. Alright, the homework. I was about to say, if you were trying to binge watch an anime and then you were like, come on, one more episode, and then you end up binging like 10 more episodes. I can understand that, but yeah, the homework, well, I can also understand that, but still. I knew I'd struggle staying awake. In more ways than one, I really am my worst enemy. Early, I pull myself back to the land of the living, determined to make an effort to pay attention to Sakurai. Alright, because this was where he fell asleep that other time. Are we gonna have another... Okay, I guess not. Would anyone care to give me a brief recap of the events that took place at the start of the war? It's alright, don't all line up at once. I grinned at him, marveling at how his humor is possibly the only thing keeping me awake. I hope he doesn't ask me though. It's hard enough staying awake, let alone actively contribute. Let's see, is he going to get chosen in the irony of his words? Okay, there we go. Luckily, Shiori spares me from that possibility, giving him a perfect answer. Well explained. Your teacher definitely deserves a pay raise. He chuckles to himself, carrying on. Well, I paid attention for a couple of minutes. That means I'm entitled to a nap, right? I don't know about you, but I don't think that's how it works. Well, it's not my education. Okay, are we going to have another daydream, fantasy, dream, whatever? Apparently so. Okay, well... <laughs> my voice hasn't even entirely recovered from trying to do the high voices, but let's see. Hey, Daniel! Yeah? She looks shyly at the ground. Do you think we'll be friends forever? Oh. Why did you have to do this to her? Well, I say that because I know what's gonna happen. I mean, okay, yes, they did finally reconnect in the end, but still. What do you mean? Like, we're pretty young, and we've been friends for a while. When we move to junior high school, we'll still be friends, right? You're just torturing me at this point. Damn it. It's one thing to see growing up Sayori sad, but now we're seeing little Sayori sad. And even when we move to high school... Hey Sayori, where is this coming from? Of course we will be. Of course. Well... Actually, yes. I'm slightly older than Off Course, because Off Course was born in 1997. Okay, well, anyways. You're my best friend! I always enjoy hanging out with you. You're my best friend too, Daniel! You've always been really nice to me. I just don't want to lose that. Sayori, you're being so silly. <laughs> I know, I know. I have an idea. Something that means we'll always be friends. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, well... It's like, only in the innocence of childhood can you say things like that. <laughs> well, you know, without anyone freaking out and whatever. Because once you start saying that in your adult years, it's like, oh no, forget it. Anyways, we should get married! Married? <laughs> <laughs> of 
But isn't that what grown-ups do? Yeah, but we're eight now! Um... Okay... That's a pretty big number! Anyway, what'd you think? If we're married, does that mean we'll be friends forever? Um... Well, that's kind of the idea. If you're married, you're supposed to be really good friends after that. I think so, yeah. I mean, my parents are friends, and they're married, so that must mean that's how it works, right? In an ideal world, yes. But obviously there's things like divorce and yeah, and anyways. <laughs> okay, okay. How do we um, do it then? I don't know. I think you get a grown-up to say it. <laughs> oh my, you're gonna bring the mom into this? Let me go find mommy, hang on. Mommy, mommy. Yes, darling, what's up? Okay, this ought to be good for a laugh and a half. Me and Sayori are getting married. Okay, well, so far the mom's taking it better than I thought she'd be. Marriage, eh? My, my, that's really mature of you two. She smiles fondly at both of us. Oh, you two are so cute together. But being married isn't easy, you know. No. Being in a relationship isn't really any easy either. You'll have to support each other, and more importantly, you'd have to do special things for your partner. Like what? Mom leans forward, a playful look in her eyes. What are you getting at? Things like sharing your chocolate, Sayori! Oh no! <laughs> Sayori gasps. Do you think you could do that? And Daniel, you'll have to compromise too. Her face. What does that mean? It means you also have to share your chocolates, mister. Well, let's just say one day you wanted to play video games, but Sayori wanted to go to the park. What would you do? This also should be good. Easy! We'd go outside first, then come in and play. Come on, Mommy. This marriage stuff is so easy. Well, your older self is going to see... Mom chuckles to herself. Oh, if it were that easy. Well, you're clearly ready then. Are you... <laughs> you can't be serious. Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll be best friends forever. Even in 50 years? Even in 50 hundred! Wait, that's... That's a big number, right? It sure is. Okay, let's see. With a jolt, er, ah, with a start, I'm jolted back to the present. Jeez. Yare yare daze. This isn't the kind of history I expected to learn about when I started this class. I don't know, I think I'm learning a lot of good history here. In fact, I think I'm getting, well, you could say I'm getting more out of this history class than you are. Man, where, where did it all go wrong? That's what I want to know. How could you do that to her? Okay, well, we used to be inseparable. Yeah, to the fact that, er, uh, to the point you wanted to frigging marry her so you could be friends forever. Why did you ruin that? Best friends until the end, no matter what happened. Uh, yeah, this reminds me of another certain promise. That another certain sum, er, well, no, it's the same certain someone I've been alluding to. Could not keep, and, well, she just kind of got bored of me, and I never heard from her again. Well, case in point. Unfortunately, I was very young and naive in those times. But, well, I guess... When you're a young teenager and you say those things, 
you're hopeful for the best and whatever, but... Well, once you hit college, then it seems like reality just seems to smack you right in the face. I know we're talking and getting along again these days, but only because of fate, kind of. But there were a few good years where we had no contact. And she said she loves being around me, and she didn't want to lose what we had. Even though she probably felt estranged when we began to drift. As Sakurai talks, an uncomfortable feeling of guilt bubbles up within me. But we're friends now, right? There's no sense lamenting on the past. I don't know about that. I feel like you're going to keep lamenting on the past. Now everyone, open your textbooks to the segment on Trench Warfare. Okay, we're finally learning about Trench Warfare. I want you to write out the main features, what it was, how it worked, and how both sides tried to break out of it. Well, looks like I can't get away with just idly listening in the background anymore. Oh, saved by the bell. After a while, the bell rings. The usual stampede occurs, with students eager to head to lunch. As I'm making my way over to the courtyard, I spot Natsuki. Hey Natsuki, how are you doing? No, don't kill me! Oh, it's you. I'm alright, I guess. There's an awkward moment of silence. A given, I suppose, as this is one of my first times talking to Natsuki one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm still alive. Looking forward to the Halloween party? Should be fun, I guess. By the way, I don't suppose you've seen Sayori, have you? Don't you guys walk to school together? What's that got to do with anything? Yeah, but she wasn't here this morning, and I and wouldn't reply to my texts. I ended up walking alone. Oh no. Huh. Weird. Nah, I haven't seen her. I'll tell you if I see her. Thanks, Natsuki. And thank you for not killing me. Thanks. I'm on my way to have lunch, if you want to join. What are you doing? You're cheating on Sayori and... Okay, no. Well, to be fair, I did this... I did the reverse of this in the Natsuki route. No, I'm good. I've already eaten anyway. Liar! Oh, okay. See you around then. She dismissively waves and turns away. I wonder if she's like this with everyone she meets. Only with the people she hates. Or, no, probably everybody. I don't have much time to ponder the question as I once again spot Yuri on my way to the courtyard. With Sayori absent, I don't really feel like sitting alone. Okay, so, time with Yuri, take two. Hey, Yuri. She jumps, instinctively looking around. At first, she's clearly startled, although a gentle, if slightly nervous, smile slowly replaces the look of surprise. Uh, ah, Daniel. Sorry, I didn't expect you. I'll stop being a ninja one day, I promise. <laughs> that was one of my skills in high school as well. I think one of my teachers even said that I could be like a secret agent if I wanted to because I literally make no sound when I enter a room. She laughs softly, closing her book and pulling out a box of food. I was on my way to the courtyard to eat, and I was wondering... Would you like to join me? Me? A are you sure? Yeah, why not? Dare I say why not? Well, if you're sure... By the way, I couldn't help but notice that Sayuri isn't with you. Oh, I was going to ask you about her. Have you seen her around, by any chance? I can't say I have. I would have thought you'd know where she was, of all people. Yeah, I know. She wasn't there in the morning, so we didn't walk to school together. She's not answering my calls, either. 
I'm leaving messages and voicemails saying that I miss you. Baby, am I doing too much? Okay, no. Yeah, I don't even know if anyone remembers that song. That's a little strange. Maybe she isn't feeling well. Maybe. Sensing my disquiet, Yuri take uh, Yuri makes a tentative step in leading the conversation. Oh, Yuri's taking a step forward. Uh, anyway, how are you finding school? It's all right, I guess. Could be better. Could be worse. So which one? History's going well, though. Sakurai makes the lessons really interesting. Ah, yes. He's certainly one of my favorite teachers. Funny. I've always found that an enthusiastic teacher makes a world of difference when it comes to lessons. Exactly. Like the history teacher that I keep mentioning in my Monica After Story videos. It's because of his enthusiasm and his approach to teaching that I still remember a good chunk of everything I learned in his class. And likewise, the science teacher who told me that I could be a secret agent. I still remember a lot of the things he would say. And it was kind of thanks to him that I got into geology. Anyway, so... Pretty much, yeah. I've been meaning to ask you something, actually. Y yes No, he's not gonna ask you to marry him, I promise. What are your thoughts on Halloween? You know, given you like horror so much. Ah, oh, well... Uh, are you sure you want to know? You're making it sound like if I ask you and you give me an answer that I'm going to regret it. Am I going to regret it? I'd hate to bore you. Oh, come on, Yuri. It's not like that. Not at all. I asked you specifically, after all. It wouldn't bore me in the slightest. <laughs> uh. Well, to be truthful... Well, most people typically feel frightened by all of the monsters and horror villains that come out to play. Halloween, ironically enough, makes me feel safer. Interesting. Why is that? I feel like I belong, if that makes sense. That's... that's not weird, is it? No, not really. I already forgot what video I said it. It probably might have been Natsuki episode 5 or 6. One of those two. I've noticed that a lot of women I know are like, totally into Halloween. They really go all out. And I know voice actress Brianna Knickerbocker, as I mentioned, she is like the ultimate horror queen. So, I mean, I don't think there's really anything wrong with that, if you feel safer. You can kind of have some sort of revelry in the horror genre. Revelry in the dark. Ugh. Yuri, Yuri. Seriously, you don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to make fun of you or anything, I promise. I'm not part of the peanut gallery. What do you mean by belong? Oh no. Uh, okay, well, she better not go in the direction I... I would be afraid that she's going in. Well, it's a day where most people get into the spirit of horror. If only for one day, it's a day where the macabre becomes the norm. That is true. I get a sense of belonging from it because Halloween is typically compromised of horror stories, movies, etc. Although I'm not much of a fan of the commercialism. COMMERCIALISM! <laughs> I think this is the first time someone actually says the exact word commercialism in here. Yeah, I think the closest was the Christmas argument with her and Natsuki, but... <laughs> okay, I'm finding this too funny. 
Oh, there. I'm making two running jokes in one. But yeah, I think I'm enjoying this more than I should be. I just... I just did not expect her to say commercialism. Okay. Although, I'm not much of a fan of the commercialism. Commercialism! It detracts from... A it detracts a little from Halloween's actual meaning. Oh, you mean all the cheesy bats, spiders, skeletons, they hang up in stores? Pretty much all the stuff that they used to hang up at Kmart. Who would also save time by hanging up Christmas decorations and... stuff for Thanksgiving decorating all at the same time. So you're literally celebrating Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas all in the same area. Precisely. Yeah, that's understandable. Another hol- er, yeah, another holiday ruined by COMMERCIALISM! I'll admit, I'm not huge on horror, but Halloween's always been fun. Sayori and I used to prank each other, scare each other with stories, that sort of thing. Obviously, we haven't done that in a good few years. Another pang of guilt. Seriously, why did you do it? I'm sure we're gonna find out, but until then, I'm just here racking my mind here. Like, how could you do that to her? Well, they've alluded that it's probably because he may be sunk into a depression after his parents divorced, but I don't know. And I mean, if that's the case, I guess it is understandable that way. But nevertheless, I, I just really want to know exactly where did it all go wrong. Spending such a day with someone else. I imagine that must be wonderful to share. Uh, it's definitely something. We carved pumpkins together over the weekend. We'll be bringing them to the club, actually, so you can check them out. I look forward to it. I'll be looking forward to this. Back to your initial question, though. As frightening as horror villains can be, I would be hard-pressed to deny that their personalities or motives are interesting. Take Frankenstein's monster, for instance. The very fact it isn't given a name, and only referred to as the monster, makes you think it would behave like a mindless beast. But if we're thinking about the Marie Shelley book, which is of course where Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster come from, Frankenstein's monster is not a mindless beast. And he actually begins to kind of educate himself. Yet once it's creative, it is unaware of its own identity and even becomes frightened. It's even able to forge relationships with a family of peasants and even saves a human girl. Yet it is continually misunderstood, even being shot for its efforts. And then at some point, the monster even tries to get Victor Frankenstein, like, make me a companion because I am misunderstood. No one else understands me, so I would like to have a companion who does understand me. Logically thinking, well, considering the unusual circumstances of my existence, what if we had someone else of similar circumstances brought into the world? You know, that way he's not alone. And misunderstood, but... Well, it obviously didn't work out that way in the story. Even after being mistreated by its creator, it still mourns the creator's death. Ah, uh, yes. I do kind of remember that part. Hardly the behavior and emotion you would expect a typical monster to display, don't you think? Exactly. When I first read the book, it was a very stark contrast to the... Well, pretty much the commercialism that portrays Frankenstein's monster as being this sort of mindless beast. Yet, in the book, exactly, he kind of begins to forge these relationships, he educates himself, he learns to 
speak proper human language, and... and I think even in one of the more recent movies with Robert De Niro, instead of referring to him as a monster, he's referred to as the sharp-featured man, to avoid kind of devolving him into a monster. Well, I can always count on Neri for a thought-provoking discussion, that's for sure. And it's just so weird since I'm kind of bouncing off of her conversation with my own sort of input as well. Well, in reality, I have a lot to say about certain stories and books I've read and movies I've seen, so... When you put it like that, I can definitely see what you mean. I guess just by labeling something as a monster, people automatically assume it'll behave like one, right? Uh-huh. And that's how commercialism turned Frankenstein's monster into... I suppose what most people would think of Frankenstein's monster to be. Versus how Marie Shelley originally made the monster out to be. Or, well, rather, more of a sharp-featured uh, sharp man. So in giving it a personality and, well, human emotions, it does make you question whether the monster is really, well, a monster. Exactly. So there's that bit of morality, sort of. Well, I guess maybe it's not morality, but... Essentially, where do you... How would you define the sharp-featured man as being a monster or as an actual human being? Because he is capable of emotions and thoughts and all this. Definitely. It's honestly fascinating. It is. Even though I haven't read the book in a long time, I still think about it. And this is only making me think about it more in that sense. The rest of the lunch break passes by in a blur. Before I know it, the bell has rung and it's time to go. Well, that's another day over. Cyrus has been on my mind all day, no matter how much I try and distract myself. She's probably just ill, given the stuff she eats. I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later. What's that supposed to mean? Do you mean she got food poisoning? Hope not. Still, can't hurt to check for myself. Okay, well... As I said, as long as I'm not scarred for life... again... Hey, Sayori? It's me. I was just wondering if you were okay, you know, because you didn't come to school today. There's muffled shuffling as I hear footsteps slowly walk towards the door. You didn't have to. I just wasn't feeling well, that's all. I've been trying to sleep it off, so that's why I missed your calls. But seriously, I'm leaving messages and voicemails saying that I miss you. Am I really doing too much? Sorry. No worries. Hey, what do you have? A sore throat? Fever? Um... I've just got a really bad headache. Like a migraine? And I'm feeling really dizzy. Then lay back down. I can get some stuff from the pharmacy if you'd like. Should make you feel better. No, it's okay. I think I'll be fine. Don't you worry about me. As she's talking, I can't help but notice what a mess the room is. I know Sayori has never been on the neat side, but this looks worse than usual. Oh, you're taking medicine for your headache already? Huh? She frantically follows where I'm pointing to and swiftly hides the medicine packets in her pocket. Wait, what? Oh god, no. Oh, those! Yeah, see? You don't have to get medicine from me after all. Right. Okay, I just hope that this does not lead to... Well... 
I think you might know where I'm kind of getting at with this. Anyway, I... I'm sorry if I'm not in the mood to talk. Or, I'm sorry if... Uh, uh, no, I had it right the first time. I'm sorry if I'm not in the mood to talk. This headache is a real meanie. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna try and get some more sleep. See ya! Sire, wait! What is it, Daniel? Look, I know you're concerned about me, and it's really sweet. But for once, can you just... Stop it? Sayori... I'm okay. I'm just really tired and not feeling myself. I'm hurt too. I stare at her. Hurt. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. I'm just really not in a good mood right now. It's okay. I guess it's on me for worrying too much. <laughs> well, I hope you feel better soon, Sayori. The soft click of the door is my only response. There's something going on here that I'm not realizing. The nightmares, the days where she's not herself, the refusal to accept my help. But then the next day, she's totally fine. Back to her cheery self, as if nothing ever happened. Ah, Am I just overreacting? No, I think your concern is merited, given the situation you're in. Maybe I do just worry about her too much. Thinking about it, if the roles were reversed, would I find her overbearing? I don't know, would you? Although I don't have anything to hide. Hmm. She said she'd tell me eventually. Huh. So for now, I'll just play along with her and try to dial back my concern. As tough as that'll be. Okay, well for now, I'm going to assume that nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. But now, she was being quite irritable at that time. Okay, well, it's time for the Halloween event. So, you know what that means, right? Ludicrous speed! Although it seems as though Sayori is back to her normal self. You know, if this really does play out the same way it plays out in the other two routes. Which so far it seems to be. Okay, well that was pretty fast. Alright, well... So the Halloween event pretty much happened exactly as it happened before. Yeah, see, it, it, even, uh, it even ends with him being like, I take it back, I hate Halloween. Okay, so I have no idea what's going on now. Brr. It's gone so cold! October was so warm, why couldn't it stay that way? We are in November now, you know. But last year's November was so mild! Wow, it's so unfair. Other places get really cold winter things like penguins, reindeers, even Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman. Okay. <laughs> Sayori, you know that Frosty the Snowman wasn't real, right? Oh my god, you're gonna crush her dreams. Oh, <laughs> okay, never mind. Of course, silly. But what if you make an actual snowman and name him Frosty? Then he's Frosty A Snowman. Not THE Snowman. Because we already know who Frosty THE Snowman is. Pretty sure that doesn't count. Yeah, it's just Frosty A Snowman. She waves my comment away, an indignant huff of visible of air visible from her mouth. I just wanted to snow. Seeing the gentle snowfall at night, when you're tucked up and cozy inside with some hot chocolate. Okay, I guess it is cozy. I suppose this would be a spelling of it from the United Kingdom. 
considering, well, I'm used to seeing it spelled C-O-Z-Y. Anyways. It's so peaceful! All the untouched snow! And when it's quiet... You should probably spend Christmas with Yuri this year, you know. Huh? What? Sounds like you two share the same thoughts. Hmm. Oh, well it's obviously really fun to have snowball fights, build snowmen, and make star angels. Don't you mean snow angels? And missing a day or two off school. <laughs> I guess since joining the Literature Club, I've started to appreciate nature a bit more. Although, I still love summer. That much hasn't changed, then. Ah, oh no! What? She's fiddling around with her pockets, desperately looking for something. You lost your house keys, didn't you? Oh no. <laughs> that would have been awful, though. I left my gloves at home! And my hands get cold so easily. Having cold fingers is the worst. Well, or having wet socks on. Blow on them, Sayori. Huh? Blow on my hands? Yes, it'll warm them up. Trust me. She takes my advice, but judging by the look on her face, it's a futile effort. It helps a little bit, but they're still so cold. I just wish I had something proper to warm them up for me. Interesting proposition. As she stands there pouting, an idea forms in my mind. One that'll benefit us both. Oh no, he's thinking. You know what happens when he's thinking, right? Give me your hands. Doing my best to ignore my beating heart, I take her hands in my own and start rubbing on them. Huh? Well, what are you doing? I roll my eyes, hoping she attributes my sudden stuttering to the cold, and not the sudden nervousness of the new situation, and not this nervousness, uh, nervousness this new situation brings. But what does it look like I'm doing? I'm knitting you a sweater. It's a slow process, but I slowly can feel her hands warming up. Given how hot my whole body feels, it's no surprise. Good. Use the embarrassment and warmness of your body. I'm half expecting there to be steam radi radiating off my fingers by this point. The silence in the air feels heavy, almost as if it were laced with some kind of tension. I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it, but the unfamiliarity of the sun intimacy makes me feel a little uncomfortable. There. They should be much warmer now. I move to pull my hands away, but Sayori's grip doesn't loosen like I expected to. She wants you to keep holding her hands. Would you, um... Would you mind holding on for just a bit longer? It's really sweet what you've done for me. I get cold super quickly, though. Uh, sure. Although, we'd have to get a move on, otherwise we'd be late. That's okay. So we make and so we make our way to school. Just like any other day where we've walked together. Except for one major difference. We're holding hands. I mean, friends can hold hands, right? It's not necessarily romantic or anything. But it feels so good. Just like it belongs. Cyrus fingers are absentmindedly stroking the back of my hand, and I have to fight the urge to return the favor. But I can't fight this feeling anymore. Now nah, to hell with it. Okay, he is he can't fight this feeling anymore. He's taking a page from Ario Speedwagon. Her hands feel so warm and soft against mine, so there's no way I'm letting this opportunity pass up. She laughs softly as my fingers trace a gentle circle around the back of her hands. She breaks the silence, but only slightly as her voice is barely audible, over the howling wind in my own hammering chest. You're pretty quiet, Daniel. Sorry. I just, uh... It's okay. You don't have to say sorry. This has been really nice, hasn't it? It has. 
My mind is screaming at me to say more. Say something! Something romantic and cheesy! Or better yet, some uh, say something charming yet witty. That works too. I feel so content and warm and most importantly, safe. So when you're with her, you feel as though you are at peace. And when you're not with her, your mind is always wandering to thoughts about her. And her well-being, where she is, how she's feeling. With the girl I grew up with, and the girl I've shared so many happy, happy memories with, the girl who provides a bundle of sunshine in my life. Your hands are, feel really nice. I, yours feel really... Don't mess this up, Daniel. Don't mess this up, Daniel! You messed this up, Daniel! Ditto. I, uh... Well, I wouldn't mind warming your hands up again. Yeah, you messed this up, Daniel. It, you know, if they ever um, get them cold... That was the lamest response I could have given her. You say don't mess up Daniel, and what does he do? He messes up. Sayuri thinks otherwise, though, as she bursts into laughter. Stop laughing at me! I feel my cheeks flare up again, this time out of embarrassment. Yes, yeah, because she's laughing at you. Hey! <laughs> sorry, Daniel, sorry! You're just so dent I mean, adorable. <laughs> yes, it's okay, you can say it. He is dense. He's dense than a barrel f He's more dense than a barrel full of sawdust. He's thicker than Monica's thighs. His head is harder than a bowling ball. And... I don't have any, o any other analogies, so... Let's move on. Yeah? Well, so are you. Um... That line is out of my mouth before my brain has a chance to even process it. This time, it's Sayori's turn to grow flustered. An endearing crimson flush appears on her cheeks as she looks away, embarrassed. Ah! Uh -huh. You can be really cute sometimes, you know that? This is deep into uncharted territory. I've really passed some kind of line. The line you would hear when you're just friends with someone. Although, do I really care? Why not? Dare I say why not? Whoa, 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 whoa. She flails, further demonstrating my point. Wait, are those... Sayori! What's that in your pocket? Are those gloves? Well then... She freezes, looking like a deer caught in the headlights. You set me up, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> no, of course not. Oh, look at the time. We're going to be late. See you at lunchtime. You're not off the hook yet. She zooms off with the velocity of a bullet. I left standing there in awe and stupor. Well, I could have said stupid. That girl is so damn sneaky. I'm telling you, she set this up. Then again. It's not like I didn't benefit from her little plan, is it? Ha 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 ha! My plan is working! I'll have him under my power in no time! Okay, did I just turn Sayori into Pamu or something? She'll be the death of me. Why do I get the feeling you'll be the death of me? Don't say things like that, Master. With high spirits, I follow after Sayori's rapidly disappearing profile. And here we are. And that was the state of the war by the summer of 1917. Okay, so then World War I did start in 1914. As he outlines the activity we'll be doing next, my ears pick, uh, my ears perk up as he mentions we'll be doing it in pairs. By the way, turn to page 394. Okay, I have to do this. Turn to page 394. 
That has to be a reference to Prisoner of Azkaban. Well, the movie, Prisoner of Azkaban. That chapter should be the most relevant for this task. Now, if you don't mind me, I'll be marking all of your homework I should have gotten back to you this week. Or, back to you last week. As per usual, his light self-depreciating style earns a smattering of laughter from the class. Again with the smattering, I've never heard that. Well, I mean, well, you know I heard it before, but I still don't know what it really means, exactly. Whatever. Emmy and I have been working diligently, making steady progress. Well, what are you even doing? It's about break time, I reckon. I reckon it's break time. I've been meaning to ask, how's the track stuff coming along? This season's been so great! Although there aren't as many sessions going on this month. I mean, there's still some, but people always chicken out when it gets called. So angry. Well, sort of. No dedication. I hate seeing people give up on stuff. What? Giving up on stuff? Pfft, no dignity. You and your running, eh? I gotta give you credit for that, though. I wish I had the drive for exercise. Uh, I don't think it's a lack of drive that stops you from exercising, Daniel. What? There's a mischievous look in her eye. You're distracted. I catch Sakurai looking at us. No, don't look at me! Hastily, I turn back to my textbook and scribble something in a lazy effort to look like I'm doing some work. See, I'm working! I'm being a prudent student! Once his back is turned, my full attention goes back to Emmy. <laughs> Distracted. By what? By who is what you should be asking? Oh no, she's on to me! That very annoying smile is making me feel a little uncomfortable. Come on, Emmy. Enough with the riddles. <laughs> enough of this fortune cookie talk. Sayori, Daniel. I see you two having lunch together all the time. Don't you walk her home as well? It's not like I walk her home, like I'm her boyfriend or whatever. I didn't know they teach you how to stalk people at the track club, Emmy. You got me feeling like a stalker. 24 hours I'ma call ya. Lola, look what you've done to me. Aha! So you do walk her home then? Touche. He fell into that trap. So you do stalk me, huh? No, she just said that to get a reaction out of you. Well, okay, I guess we'll never know for sure. So, do you like her? Uh... Oh no! Hey, I promise I won't tell anyone. Except maybe Shiari. Because we're the only two other students in existence in this classroom. And come on, the amount of times I let you copy my homework... I grumble under my breath. I had a feeling you'd use that to get a favor out of me. Huh. <laughs> always gotta have ammunition, Daniel. And you always gotta know when to play your cards. Use it against you. Daniel! Of course not! It's just my way of reminding you that you can trust me. Well... Uh... Actually, no. I guess I am being a little pushy, aren't I? Sorry, I shouldn't have. Yeah, you really shouldn't have. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. Man, no one even says that. It's not like I don't want you to... Er, it's not like I don't want to tell you, it's just... Was I really going to say, it's not like I want to tell you or anything? Or... Uh, I don't know, it's really confusing. Well, I didn't tell Mom about my feelings. And by the way... In between videos, I did some minimal research. You know how I said to that question, that decision, I don't see how this is going to affect anything. Apparently, this is one of at least 
three determining factors to getting the bad end, or the good end. Well, I found stuff on four, but for sure there are at least three defined questions, or answer choices I gotta make. And I'm not really, and I'm, uh, and I'm really feeling in over my head now. Okay, well in that case, alright, it makes more sense. Maybe if he had told her, she could have maybe given him some advice for how to deal with these feelings, versus now he's literally in over his head, and yeah, I've been in that spot before. Perhaps it can't hurt to get a new perspective. Although, there's no guarantee that Emmy's perspective is going to be a good one. You might look like Renee, but I don't know about you entirely. I guess to put it simply, yeah, I do like her. Aha, <laughs> I knew it. That's so cute, though. How long have you liked her? Oh no. I nervously scratched the back of my neck. Oh, uh, well, um... We've always been childhood friends, but over the past few years, we started drifting apart. Romantic reconnection. I joined her in the literature club last month, and, well, since then, I've just really enjoyed being around her. I guess I... I guess I never really realized what my feelings were. I've been spending more time... or we've been spending more time together recently, and... There's the sigh. You know the one where you're like, oh, <sighs> Like he's thinking about her. He's in exultation right here. I sigh dreamily. You're noticing all the little quirks about her, aren't you? Ah. Yeah, like how blue her eyes are, how warm and soft her hands feel, and how cute she looks when she's concentrating. <laughs> well, I noticed that ages ago. She's always been really good at making me feel... at ease. Well, there you go. Then it is love, for sure. Whenever she's around, I just feel really, uh... Um, I don't know, just... happy? Oh god, all the all of that mushy stuff must sound super embarrassing. Yeah, it's a good thing no one's recording this and showing it to dozens of possibly dozens of people who might stumble upon this randomly. Sorry, I know this must sound really cringy. Not at all. It's fine. I know the feeling myself. Really? Oh, that guy you started dating a couple of months ago? Is it Steve? The new guy, right? That's the one. So, what was it like for you? What little things did you start to notice about him? Yes. Sure. Tell me what's so great about Steve. I guess I realized how much he really thinks with his heart. He's a little dense. But I can really come to appreciate how patient he can be. Oh my god, it seems like Daniel and Steve have a lot of things in common. <laughs> how ironic. But that's enough about me. Tell me more about you. Sounds like exactly the same thing is going on here. When are you going to tell Sayori? I don't know. Uh, well that's the thing. Ah, Daniel, Emmy. Damn it, Sakurai! We were having a moment! Everything going well? It was until you showed up. Oops. Oops! Looks like I was getting into the conversation with Emmy that I totally forgot we were in a classroom. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? Thankfully, we've made enough progress for Sakurai not to chide us. He studies our notes doing well so far, although I'd add a little more detail about how the United States entered and how that clashed against their policy of isolationism. Yep. And how Woodrow Wilson kinda sort of 
eased away from that a little bit after World War I ended. Anyways, more history lesson. More of a history lesson for you there. After all, it was a turning point in the war, from both a military and foreign policy perspective. Yeah, and it's eventually how the United States would grow to become a superpower after World War II. Noted, sir! As he meanders off, Emmy wastes no time in jumping back to the conversation. You are gonna tell her, right? Uh... I don't know. Or, uh... I don't know. Part of me wants to, but I'm super nervous. Because I don't want to ruin our friendship. Oh. Uh, well, if that's the case, I really was in that case years ago. What if she doesn't feel the same way? She dismisses my concerns with a frown and shake of the head. Look, I can tell that she likes you. How can you possibly... Female intuition. Okay. First motherly intuition, now female intuition. What are they gonna come up with next? No fair. Women get all the psychic powers. Damn it, yes. I need some psychic powers too. Can I have some male intuition or something, anything? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Trust me, she spends so much time with you, and my gut feeling has never been wrong before. She winks at me. Stop. Er, okay, well, she's not trying to seduce him. Strangely enough, it fills me with a little bit of confidence. Uh, okay, then. I swallow. I guess I'll tell her. Tomorrow. I just don't know how to do it. Um... Well, first you get a radio, and then you dress up in a tuxedo and a cape. And then you learn how to play Spanish guitar, and then you get outside her front window, and... Then you start playing the Spanish guitar while the radio plays some kind of backup music, and then you... serenade her with... Where was I even going with that? Look, it's easy! Yeah, it's probably a hell of a lot easier than what I was suggesting. All you have to do is be honest with her. Tell her what you told me. That when I'm with you, I feel at ease. And I feel like I'm at peace. And ca I cannot bear the thought of being away from you for too long. My life is empty and meaningless without you. Okay, well, don't go that far. That you really like spending time with her, and that you want her to be your girlfriend. Hey, hey, you, you, I want you to be my girlfriend. Easy! She leans back triumphantly. Psh, easy for you to say. Oh, and never confess over text or online. Yeah, you don't want to do that. This is the kind of thing you want to confess face to face. Because of the sentimental value those words hold. Because then otherwise, yeah, it just... It kind of... The words kind of lose their meaning, for one thing. Has to be done in person. Well, it's Thursday today, so... You gotta tell her tomorrow. Oh, so he is gonna have to tell her tomorrow. Well, sort of, I guess. Trust me, you don't want the anticipation hanging over you during the weekend. But that's so... Soon. Think of it this way. The sooner you tell her, the sooner you can start dating. I won't lie. That's a pretty appealing prospect. You have my attention. Tomorrow it is. Who knows, maybe I am kind of psychic. Kind of. And let me know how it goes. Okay, here we go. Managed to find your gloves this time, eh? Snooping as usual, I see. She flails around nervously. I yeah, I guess I didn't know they were in my pocket the whole time before. <laughs> as she puts them on, I'm hit by a pang of disappointment. Well, it's your fault. Maybe if you hadn't said anything, she probably would have gone along with it again. I was hoping to get to keep her warm and hold her hands again. Hang on, Sayori. My scarf has come loose. What? You're so silly, Daniel. Didn't your mom teach you how to properly tie a scarf? 
I don't know, I guess I forgot how to do that when I started being around you. Uh... Yeah. I just never got around to actually putting it into practice. Okay, nice save. Let me help you. She stands in front of me, completely undoing the scarf and placing it around my neck. Oh, hello. Dramatic close-up. At, uh, at this distance, not only can I see her breath forming a misty cloud in front of me, but I can even feel it on my face. As she works, she brushes against my neck and collar. I have to force myself not to burrow into her touch. There! With the final loop, the scarf now sits snugly, providing, providing the warmth it should. Even after she's finished, her hands linger on my neck. Oh! Despite the fabric of her gloves, I can feel they're still cold. Thank you, Sayori. Much better. You're welcome! Sakurai told us that during the war, a bunch of miners and bombs set off an explosion so loud, it was heard in London, all the way from France. Oh, wow. Over 140 miles away. That must have been one big explosion. Do you think the miners did the whole cool guys don't look at explosions thing? <laughs> oh, come on, that didn't exist back then. The same way you had one job didn't exist back then, either. Maybe that's where the movie directors got the idea from. Now I know where Michael Bay gets his ideas. I'll ask Sakurai tomorrow. For serious. Knowing him, I'll probably just get a sarcastic answer, though. <laughs> I tell you an interesting math fact. But math isn't interesting. Oh? <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm definitely with you there. Seriously, you can't write a poem with numbers, or a story. Sure you... well... I guess if you used... Ah, uh, alphanumeric code and whatever, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen my parents using the quadratic formula or worked out the area of a triangle in real life. And my teacher tells me that math is a lifelong skill. Depending on where you go, it is. Really? I find it pretty useful. You know, in counting up the amount of times you complain about something. Hey! You said you agreed with me. Kidding, kidding. Anyway, I'll catch you tomorrow, Sayori. I'm gonna throw a master ball at you. Okay, no. Have a good one. Bye! Okay, well. Now we have the sad music again. Man, what a long day today has been. I feel like I learned more from Emmy than I did Sakurai. Probably. I guess tomorrow is the day I finally ask Sayori, huh? Unless fate decides to intervene. Being totally honest, I'm kind of terrified. I'd honestly be surprised if you weren't. It's normal for every guy to be terrified, especially if it's with your first love. You'd have to be crazy not to be terrified, if... well, from my point of view. But then again, how much longer do I want this anticipation to loom over me? Besides, Emmy is confident Sayori likes me, so... It should go smoothly, right? Emphasis on the should. After all, she does spend a lot of time with me. And the trick with her gloves this morning... She tricked me! I just hope I've not misread all of the signs. Or else tomorrow is going to be super awkward. I saw the sign. It opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Okay. What's up, Daniel? You're looking really glum. It's nothing, Sayori. Hey! I know something's bothering you. You can talk to me. It'll be okay. I didn't do well in the end-of-year exams. 
people found out and they kept laughing at me. Plus my parents are going to be so mad. I'm an idiot. Hey! You are an idiot, Daniel! You're not stupid at all! But I messed up so badly. You're still really smart to me, though. You helped me with my homework so many times. And look, you tried your best, right? Yeah. That's fine, then. That's all that counts. Teachers can't expect more, can they? Yeah, I suppose you're right. And those meanies? They're just jealous. As my grandma would say, they're just idiots. Jealous? Huh? Of what? Well, you're really good at the Floor is Lava game. <laughs> and I was just gonna say... And I was just gonna say that we play that now. That'll cheer you up. I know it. Uh, I don't know. Come on! You can be Spider-Man again! Yay, I can be Spider-Man! Fine, if he's gonna be Spider-Man, then I'll just jump into the story and be like, Hi there, Spidey! I'm Dr. Octopus! I'm gonna get you, Spidey! And then I shall have upside-down kiss with Mary Jane! Okay, no. Uh, okay then, let's start here. Yay! So happy. Wait. Okay, Saitama's still there. So even in the past, Saitama was here. The next hour passes by in a blur. Within moments, we were already hopping around the room. Zipping from chair to chair, room to room. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Ah, watch out! The lava monster's there! Haha, <laughs> I'm never going to see Mom's house plant the same way again! Oh god! Come on, Sayori, you got this! There's a fairly big gap between the two couches and Sayori peers over the edge, trying to see if she can make it. Even if you fall, I've got you! Okay. She jumps, soaring through the air, and lands right next to me, a triumphant grin on her face. I. Wait, I. Okay. I. What was that? Or A! Way to go! Okay, sorry, I guess that's my Hispanic blood acting up again. She grins and offers her hand for a high five. High five me! Don't leave me hanging. Having fun? Oh, hi, Mom! You two look like you're having the time of your lives. Good to see you again, Sayori. And you! We were just playing the Floor is Lava game! Quite an active imagination the pair of you have, huh? Mom smiles endearingly. Joys of childhood, eh? That's pretty much what I'm saying. You could only have moments like this through the joys of childhood. Would either of you like some snacks? I think we have some tempura. Tempura shrimp? Sayori's face brightens immediately. Ooh! That would be really nice! Thank you! If that's okay? Of course, dear. How about you, son? <clears throat> See, my voice is getting kind of... How about you, son? Yeah, er, yeah, tempura works for me as well, mommy. Thanks. Oh, and by the way... Watch out for that tall houseplant in the other room. You mean this one? I've heard it's secretly a scary lava dragon in disguise. Oh no! She winks and leaves. <laughs> okay, and then nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. Okay. Well, I really do like these sort of flashbacks. And I guess we're kind of sort of getting closer to the truth. Man. It's days like these that I really... Or, it's days like these that I really wish my dad was around. I'm sure he's experienced with all of the nervousness associated with asking a girl out. Yeah, too bad I didn't have my dad to ask about that. That probably would have helped. Or maybe not, I don't know. Well, anyways. 
Relax, Daniel. Relax. You're just asking your childhood best friend to be your girlfriend. You know, no big deal. No pressure. No big deal, right? Who am I kidding? Of course it's a big deal. What do... What did all those web websites online say? Oh my god, you actually looked up stuff online? I don't know about that. Just relax. Be yourself. Be confident. Wow, some advice that was. I'm just banking on Emmy's intuition being correct. Please be correct. Please be correct. Please be correct. If it's not, then I'm going to humiliate myself. And then I'm going to have to skip town and get a new name and maybe get a funny mustache and work at a chocolate factory. It has gotten really rather cold these days, hasn't it? Ugh, definitely. Winter is such a pain. It definitely makes waking up for tennis practice a little harder. It does have its upsides, however. It really makes for the perfect weather to snuggle up indoors with a soothing hot chocolate and a nice book. And seeing all the snow or seeing all the snow softly fall during the night is really relaxing too. Although it gets ruined the next day when people walk through it. Having end of semester exams is such a drag too. I can't help tuning out their conversation. Today has been going by so slowly. All throughout class this morning, I could barely concentrate. I've just been picturing how I imagine the conversation with Sayori will go down. Safe to say, that's definitely been a, the focus of my mind. Emmy shooting me annoy knowing looks every so often didn't do much to staunch the whirlwind of uncertainty in my head. In the club room, we just finished sharing poems, and I can't wait for the session to end. And people get really mushy around Christmas this time as well. Okay, well I can't blame commercialism for that. You know, like cuddling up together, holding hands, that all that stuff. Yuck. Well, to be fair, in another universe, you were my girlfriend. And we were doing that. You say that like it's a bad thing, Noski. Come on, it'd be lovely to have someone to warm you up when the nights get cold. Do you speak with experience, Sayori? Don't you think? Hmm. Is this a hint? I don't know, is it a hint? I'm pretty sure it is, if we're being real here. Or just me totally misinterpreting. Don't second your Eh, don't second guess yourself. That's what kind of. That's what kind of. Ah, second guessing myself was pretty much my undoing. So in the sense, my, I was my worst enemy too when it came to asking out anyone. No way. I can see where both of you are coming from, actually. On one hand, the, that physical intimacy must be quite nice. Although I have to admit, public displays of affection can be a bit overwhelming. No PDAs. And... Well, in another, another timeline slash universe, you were my girlfriend as well. And... I don't know if that's a slight hint to... how she gets kind of over emotionally overwhelmed and... To, almost to the point of exultation, I don't know. Yeah, especially when couples start playing tonsil tennis with each other. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, at least Monica's laughing, too. Monica laughs. Interesting way of putting it, Natsuki. I'm right, though. Ugh, save that stuff when you're at home. Get a room. But what about presents? Huh? That's something else that makes Christmas so enjoyable. Yeah. Or, when are we going to have the Christmas argument? Buying gifts for other people and seeing their reactions. That's definitely a rewarding feeling, especially when they really like your choice. 
don't you think, Daniel? Don't mind me, just trying to figure out how to ask you to be my girlfriend. You know, no big deal, just pretend I'm not here. Oh yeah, everything's fine. You know, just trying to figure out the best way to ask you to be my girlfriend. You know, just that sort of little thing. Kind of been on my mind all day, you know. Oh, um, yeah, just trying to decide what to get you guys for Christmas, that's all. What about the secret Santa? Racking my brains, I desperately try and follow up with what I've just said. Let's say I had to get you a present, Monica. What would you ask for? Can't buy you a piano, though, sorry. Well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? It would ruin the mystery. Well, you're, you're always busy with, like, a billion things going on at once, right? So, I don't know. Maybe, like, a diary or a planner or something? I mean, Sayori did get her a planner in that one timeline. Or a tennis racket? I have no idea. Those aren't bad ideas, actually. It's always difficult buying presents for someone. Especially when it's someone you don't know particularly well. You could do with a watch, Monica. Yeah, that way, whenever you ask what time it is, I don't have to say, it's time for you to get a watch. Because it's like, the joke's on you, I have a watch! And then I'll feel like an idiot. A watch? Why? Well, you could do with the free time! Uh... <laughs> oh, man. You got me there with that one. One day, Sayori's jokes will get a, l a little funnier. Okay, well, I mean, it took me a little while, but I got the joke. You know, free, the free gift of time from the watch. Okay, well, I guess I'm not helping. Ah, oh, finally. The school day sure did take its sweet time. While it did drag on, I'd be lying if I said I was ready for what's about to come. You're never ready. Hey, Sayori. Uh, um... Are you, uh, busy after school today? Nope! Well, apart from homework, but I didn't get much today. Okay, well, um... I nervously scratch the back of my neck. Sayori eyes me curiously. I love you and I want you to go out with me! Okay, don't do that. Did think we could hang out a bit? Today, after school, please don't pick up on the desperation in my voice. Sure, my place or yours. Sukasa Dukasa. Or Mikasa Sukasa. Yours sounds good. Okay, we haven't spent time together after school in a long time. What made you change your mind? Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Hormones. Why am I getting a shrewd suspicion that she knows my plan and is just going along with it to watch me squirm? Damn it, you and Monica love seeing me in displeasure, I guess, not pain. Monica's the one who likes seeing me in pain. And nothing, nothing. Oh, you don't have a Christmas tree for us to decorate, do you? It's barely mid November, Sayori. A bit too early for that. Yeah, I don't want to be like those people who start playing Christmas songs even before Thanksgiving. Uh huh. Okay, here we are. Anyway, what did you want to do, Daniel? I don't know, what do you want to do? I don't think it's healthy for a human heart to beat this fast. Hummingbird heartbeat. Well, I, um. I uh, wanted to tell you something, Sayori. Okay, what's up? It's now or never. Uh, well, look, I I really don't know the best way of saying this. Sayori, I... She's just sitting there, patiently waiting for me to speak. There's a hint of anticipation lurking in those blue eyes of hers. Those beautiful blue eyes. Taking a deep breath, I stare at the floor and let my mouth talk before my brain has a chance to catch up. Okay, here we go. Look, Sayori, 
I'm, I really like you, and I'm uh, really sorry if this changes anything between us, because I value our friendship, and I wouldn't want to ruin anything, so... I guess it was ever since we were kids. I've always been drawn to you, and, uh... Well, seeing you again after these years has been really, really nice, and I'm so glad we get along, like the huge gap in our history was never there. I really like you, Sayori, in that way, and, uh, well... I was just wondering if you felt... Like, do you feel the same way, or...? Well... I trail off into nothingness, cringing at how pathetic my conversation must have sounded. Well... I mean, well, I guess since I'm kind of acting, I didn't know how to make it sound more pathetic. In fact, I barely even took any breaths during that whole triad. So much for be confident. Oh my god, here we go. Man, I'm, this is getting me kind of pumped. The silence is getting overwhelming. Lifting my eyes off the safe haven that is the floor, I have to force myself to meet her gaze. Oh my god, no, not this music. Anything but this music. The expression on her face is hard to read. And yeah, I can even hear the the sound of rain, which is a nice touch to this song, especially given Sayori's whole theme of the rain clouds. She's smiling, but at the same time there's definitely a hint of sadness behind her eyes. Oh no. I should have seen this coming. <laughs> I guess it really is my own fault. Huh? Fault? What do you mean? I was selfish. What? How? I really like you too, Daniel. I should be feeling relieved, happy even, at hearing those words. Yet I can't help but feel like something is terribly amiss. Because it is. I... I think I always have. Even when we first met. Oh my god, no. Why are you doing this to me? She smiles warmly at me, but there are tears forming in her eyes that trickle down her face as she blinks. You've always been so nice to me, even when I didn't deserve it. Even after we drifted apart, you were still willing to talk to me and see how I was doing. You took an interest in my club, even though I didn't think... You'd enjoy literature. And at first, I was a little unsure. I wasn't sure if things would be like how they were when we were kids. Deep down, I was hoping they would. And over time, I guess I got my wish. Because they, d because they did. Your jokes, your personality, just by being around you. Every day was like, a walking reminder of easier times. I don't get it, Sayori. If you like me too, and you're happy with me being around, what's the problem? She shakes her head. It's not that easy. You just don't understand. Of course I don't, Sayori. Can you blame me? I can, I can tell there's something going on with you. But every time I try to help, you shut me down. Is it any surprise I don't understand? That day before the festival where you wouldn't even talk to anyone. And that day when you weren't in school. Something wasn't right that day. It was just a gut feeling. I've always been able to tell when something's wrong, Sayori, no matter how well you hide it. I really wish you couldn't. That horrible nightmare you had. You know some of the things you were saying? You think you're useless? That you don't want to do it anymore? What were you talking about? Please, Sayori, just tell me. What's so tiring? What don't you want to do anymore? Why do you think you're useless? Did someone say something nasty to you? 
I swear to God, if someone's been saying stuff, tell me and I'll go f You're right, Daniel. There is someone. I clench my fist so hard I can feel my nails digging into my palm. Well, I was thinking he was going to say, just tell me and I'll go fuck them up. Well. Who? Oh, it's me. I blink, stupefied. That was the last response I expected to hear. You? What on earth is that meant to mean? You're saying stuff to yourself? We're just going around in circles here, Sayori. Please, enough with the mysteries and the vague answers. I've been honest with you. What could this horrible dark secret be that makes you so useless and unlikable? Depression. For the second time this evening, I'm at a complete loss for words. Uh huh? There. That's my secret, Daniel. You're... depressed? I've had depression for most of my life. Oh... Oh my god, Sayori. That was probably the most lackluster response I could have given you. I'm sorry. Don't be. I wouldn't have expected you to know how to respond. She gives me a short, humorous, humorless laugh. I don't know what to say. I... I had no idea. I never would have known. You always seem so... Happy? Cheerful? But I don't get it. I thought you were so happy. She sighs as tears leak down her cheeks. No, Daniel. I never was. It was just a mask. The proverb. I really tried to keep it up. Her voice wavers as she speaks. Fresh tears fall down her face, but unlike the day of her nightmare, she makes no attempt to hide them. Her secret has been laid bare. Every day. Waking up, getting ready, walking to school. All of the things that people take for granted. And it's been so scary, so difficult. I was so scared that at any moment I'd let my mask flip, flip up and you'd see the real me. So, that's what you were referring to when you said it was tiring? That you don't want to do it anymore? She nods sadly. And all of the other things too? Like waking up? And eating too. I don't have the energy to cook actual meals. Oh no. That is... Well, as I've mentioned in Yuri's videos, this is kind of a road I've walked down. So maybe not to the same extreme as Yuri in some regards, but... I guess you could say I've walked a combo of hers and Sayori's roads before in my time. I've been there. I've been there so many times, actually. The day my grandmother died, who meant the world to me. The day my friends in middle school just started telling me to go screw off and that they were too good to be around me. The day I fell in love with Maddie, only to realize that in the end she didn't care about me anymore, despite the promise that we made each other to always be there for each other no matter what. And then finally the day that my mom died. That just really pushed me over the edge. And it almost felt like I would never be happy again. So yeah. I've walked that road before. And even now after the loss of my aunt. I've kind of fallen back into that road, 
just as I was finally feeling like I was getting out of the hole and I was starting to feel happy again, despite losing so many of my loved ones, I lose another person in my life and then... So it's hard to do it sometimes. To have the energy to get up in the morning and carry on with your day. Because it just feels so emotionally draining to try and be happy and not to worry anyone around you. Especially because you don't want to worry them and you don't want to feel like a burden to them. It just gets so difficult. So yeah, to say that I for sure relate to Sayori, well, I mean, like I said, I feel like I've literally walked down that same road with some touches of Yuri's dark path kind of sprinkled in there as well. So yeah, I know what it's like. And you could say that even now I'm still trying to carry on with my life, even though I've had to deal with so much loss and heartbreak and so many other emotions I can't even describe. But anyway, well, let's get back to the story. So that's why you went for pizzas and other junk food? God. It's all coming together now. And the whole thing has been so bittersweet. Seeing you again, hanging out just like we used to. For the first time, what feels like such a long time, I felt something that felt alien to me. Happiness. It wasn't much, but it was something enough to help me through these days. Like when you warmed my hands up. I felt so bad in asking you to help, but sometimes I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't help it. It's so hard fighting against what your heart wants. And I started to like you. And as I started to like you, it terrified me. But why? Because it was getting harder and harder to resist being selfish. Selfish? Selfish in dragging you into my mess. You shouldn't be bothering with someone like me. Part of me wondered if me being so miserable would put you off. Well, I guess if anything, and this is just me here, if you truly love that person, and if you see them being miserable, it's not gonna... It's not gonna put you off. If anything, if you... And you're... Well... If you as a person, you see... Uh, how do I want to word this? If a hypothetical person sees their loved one... Being so miserable... Instead of just getting fed up and... Saying that they're tired of dealing with it... I feel that the... The proper and more caring thing to do would actually be to stay by their side and try to help them get through this instead of just leaving them there to just let the pain hurt them even more to the point where it consumes them and the point where their mind goes into a very dark place they just can't get out of. In a sense, pretty much, I would like to do, or I would like to think that for someone, if they truly do love that person, they will stay by them. Instead of basically doing what Maddie did to me and just getting bored of me or fed up with when my depression started kicking in again. <sighs> I 
And I guess you can say that's why it strikes a chord with me whenever I hear something like this. Because I've been on the receiving end of that. And it hurts like hell. I can't even describe how it feels. Especially if... Especially given it's... I was a lot younger. Naive, kind of. It was just kind of an innocent, blossoming love for me, and then... <sighs> well, anyways... Sorry for interrupting, I know some people probably hate it when I do this, but I can't help it. And as I said to one of the trolls on my channel, my videos, my style. Another sad smile. But it didn't seem like you minded. No, you really stuck around and tried your best to comfort me. Even though I was so horrible to you and kept you at a distance. And now here we are. A situation that's both what I want and fear the most. I'm worthless, Daniel. I couldn't care less about myself. I just want the others to be happy. And now I've messed that up. Because now you know about my depression. And knowing you, you'll definitely worry. I really couldn't win either way. I'm so, so sorry for dragging you into this, Daniel. I tried so, so hard. But with you here, telling me you like me too. Her voice is a mess at this point. A whirling mess of tears and anguish. For once, I just want to embrace that selfishness and be your girlfriend. It's almost like another person who likes- who looks like Sayori has been talking. No, it is like a different per- like it's a different person. As she spoke, I was sinking further and further into disbelief. How could it be that my happy, carefree childhood friend was harboring such a sad secret? You're definitely not selfish at all, Sayori. How could you be? You're one of the most selfless people that I know. You make it your duty to make everyone else happy. But at the sacrifice of her own happiness... I could never not care about you. You're my best friend. And I'd do anything to make you happy again. I'm just so glad you told me this. Why? Oh, just come here. Please don't hug me. Ignoring her cries, I embrace her, holding her close to me. To my surprise, though, she pulls free and pushes me away from her. I didn't even know she had the strength. I'm sorry, Daniel. I just... I really can't deal with this right now. Can you please leave? Leave? Sayori, look what you just told me! Do you honestly expect me to go like it didn't mean anything? Yes. I stare at her incredulously. Her resolution doesn't change. All sorts of feelings are swirling through my head right now. I'm still trying to process what she's just told me. And. Even after suffering for years, she's still this stubborn? Anger floods through my veins. Probably an unreasonable reaction, but at this point I'm too emotionally charged to listen to rationally. Oh, so that's how it is, right? I'm allowed to tell you my problems, and you're not allowed and you're allowed to cheer me up, but I'm not allowed to help you. What kind of friendship is this, Sayori? You'll never understand. Of course I won't, because you never let me in. Is it any surprise I don't understand? I instantly regret raising my voice the moment the words leave my mouth. Just go. 
Please! Without any choice left, I dejectedly comply. <sighs> Back in my own house, my mind is still racing at a million miles an hour. Now that the heat of the moment has passed, I ashamedly realize that I probably handled that pretty poorly. Yes, it was frustrating being kept in the dark, then having such a huge bombshell dropped on me, then again being unable to help. But getting angry at her was the worst thing to do. Man, I'm such an idiot. Ah. God damn it, Emmy. So much for female intuition, eh? Well, to be fair, she was right. Sayori does like him. But at the same time, her depression is eating away at her, and it's not allowing her to be happy and accept and be open to those feelings, so... I mean, well... I guess me just trying to work out... Emmy was right. She was half right. The problem is just that Sayori's depression... It's not letting her be openly accepting to love and... Comfort from other people. Because her depression keeps telling her that she's not worth... The love or comfort that other people give to her. Well, now what? It's not like I can tell anyone about Sayori's secret. Ugh. Well, I guess it can't hurt to see what the internet has to say, right? Once again, turning to the internet. Well, I guess I can say there's a little more concrete facts and whatever about depression than there is with romance and asking girls out and whatever. At least to me, all that stuff on how to ask out girls seems like a lot of hooey to me. Well, at least in my experience, anyway. Hmm. Man, there's a lot of articles on how to cope when a loved one has depression. Well, that is if she'll even forgive me. Doing my best to put that thought out of my mind, I carry on. Let's see. No quick fix for depression. Of course not. It's not something that you can just snap your fingers and it's gonna go away, like... And then everything's gonna be la di da di da di da everyone's happy and singing and skipping around in lollipop land. Not everything is sugar-coated rainbows when it comes to depression. A lot of patience and empathy. That's what a person with depression really needs, especially that sense of understanding. Otherwise, they're just gonna close up even more and push you away if they feel like you, you're just being too harsh on them. Or that you don't understand or you get impatient. Some days will be normal, other days they won't be able to get out of bed. It can be difficult and demands a lot of patience. Empathy, understanding, blah blah blah. Oh boy, we'll be here for a while. Well, honestly, if you really care about her, take as much time as you need. Okay, well, obviously depression is a pretty pretty touchy subject with me, as you can probably tell by the sternness in my voice there. Okay, well, anyways... I guess... Yeah, for now, the video is long enough, and... Well, I guess I'm kind of emotionally drained right now. Okay, well, the next time... We'll see... How MC goes about this. To say he's kind of messed up royally would be kind of an understatement. But Sayori's secret is now... Known to him. But now it's up to him to actually step up and do something about it. And what he chooses, well, we shall see. So, I'm Margaret Shadow, and I will see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Stay golden, and later, folks.